Hello and welcome to a very special How I Paint Things. Now today we're going to tackle the Eternal Dynasties, which is one of the new factions being put together by One Page Rules over at their site. Now this is a 3D print, this one came off of my Alagu Mars 2 Pro, but I'm pretty certain you'd get a decent result off of any resin printer. The pre-supported files come out really easily, which I am always glad for, because I hate, <laughs> I hate doing supports manually. Now, I decided I would do red armor for this guy because the Eternal Dynasties, I think you can probably see there's a little bit of Eastern influence on them, similarly to, you know, Tau, for example. And if you are looking to paint one or the other, well, the skills are essentially transferable. So if you are looking at doing, say, Farsight Enclaves, then this is a pretty good way of getting something similar to that. Just use a darker color for the fatigues, whatever it is you decide on. So I'll include the base uh, recipe that I used for this in the description. All the paints will be listed there too. So without any further mucking around, let's get started. After assembling this fella, the first thing I've done is to hit him with a primer of Wraithbone because I'm going to paint quite bright red armor on him. Now, if you did want to do something darker, say you want to paint Farsight Enclaves, then starting from either a brown or even something like Mephiston Red would work perfectly well in its place. I'm going to concentrate on brighter armor pretty much throughout. You can just swap for darker colors if you think that would look cooler. But I want, I want smart. I want bright. That's what we're going to go for. The very first detail that we're going to paint is tucked away all the way up under his helmet here. It's quite difficult to see on these guys. And it is going to be his lenses. Now I've got here Iand in yellow, one of the contrast colors. And I'm just going to blob this fairly messily into that slot there. Now, most of the time, you'll hear me talking about painting from the bottom up. So starting from a lowest layer, like his undersuit, and then painting the armor over the top. But in this case, because the armor is really going to be the star of the show, I want to make it easier to make that really bright, really very sharp. And the undersuit can be a little bit flat by comparison. It's really just going to be there to be dark and make the armor look lighter for a little bit of visual contrast. So instead, we're going to paint the armor first this time, and then the suit later. So I've got a little bit here of Evil Sun Scarlet, and I'm going to use the medium base brush for the most part. Uh, I tend to find this is really useful. And let's just apply this fairly messily over all of the armor. Don't worry too much if you do hit areas that are going to be black or a dark brown later. Uh, and make sure that you do get this into any recesses. Uh, for example, on this pack here, you'll see there's this little gap around these little, I don't know, techno dealy boppers. If you don't uh, get in there, then the wraith bone is really going to shine. So let's do all of the armor. And if I need to, I will swap down to a smaller brush to reach some areas. But for the most part, I think this brush will be fine. Now that is red. That is so red. <laughs> And I have painted more of him red than is actually going to be red. A really good example for this is down here on his boots. Now I am going to paint in some of these areas with black later on. But by covering over most of these areas in red, it gives me more options. I can come to a point where I start putting a little bit of black on and I might think to myself, okay, that's, that's enough. That gives me the contrast that I want there. But as bright as he is, we're going to go ahead and make him brighter. We're going to do our highlights on him now with a dry brush. For this, I'm going to use Kindle Flame, which is a really, oh boy, bright orange. Now for this, I'm going to use one of my little makeup brushes. This is about the same size as a Citadel small dry brush. So again, if you do want to stick to what you know, it's not a problem. These slightly softer bristles, though, I tend to find make it easier to dry brush without applying too much paint. And nine times out of ten, if you're having issues dry brushing, that's going to be your problem. So yeah, soft bristles, good idea. This is a spot liner for lining spots. I don't know, it's just it's a little one. So I've got some Kindle Flame in my bristles there, and I'm going to work most of that off into a kitchen towel here. And then you'll see my big old thing of sprayed cardboard. I've sprayed this black so that now what I can do once I've prepped up my brush is to scrub along this area a few times. And because there's a little bit of texture to it, over time, you'll see what you're leaving behind. 
Now, I'm not leaving very much at all there. And to be honest, that's ideal. I'd rather go over an area four or five times and get it right than splodge too much paint on and have to start over. But once you are satisfied with the amount of paint you've got on the brush, let's start with this area here. Lots of detail. I'm going to lightly flick a few times over that area. There we go. And we'll pick up all of the raised detail and leave a nice orange line on all of that. Oh gosh, that's nice. Okay, so we're going to go around and do this to all of the red, making sure to catch the edges. You can apply a little more of this than you might think. Uh, because we're going to shade this, it's going to dull that down quite a bit. So don't be afraid. Any areas where you do think you've got too much, well, you can easily go back over with the uh, Evil Sun Scarlet again if you want to tidy that up. But I'm going to go around now, dry brush the whole dude, and let's get a look at what that looks like. I did mention you were going to want to hold your nerve and apply maybe a little more than you might think. And in some areas, particularly on his boots, you'll see it has gone a little bit chalky, but that is what this next stage is going to deal with. So I have here Karaberg Crimson. Now this is a really nice deep red shade. It's not one that I use very often, uh, but if you are going to do something in bright red for an army project, it's totally worth picking up. So let's apply this over, funnily enough, all of the red. Make sure that you are letting it get into all of the recesses so that you've got plenty of shading. And once we've applied this over all of the armor, we'll let this dry for about half an hour. As if by magic, we have a nice deep red. We've still got that shading and highlighting going on the edges, but we don't have to faff around and painstakingly highlight everything, which is what I love. I love to avoid all the hard work. We're going to move on to his the soft stuff he's wearing, so his trousers, his sleeves and such. And for this, I am using US Field Drab from Vallejo. Now this one is basically Steel Legion Drab from Citadel, so again, if you want to stick to what you know, there's the color. But you'll see pretty much straight away why I would be using this rather than some of the Citadel range. That coverage is just perfect. So I'm going to go over all of his trousers. Um, now I'm doing these much lighter than I would if he were a Farsight Enclave. Reason being, I want them to look less like leather or it's like squeaky PVC stuff. I want them to look like fabric. Uh, but whatever the case, you can choose what you like here. I'm going to paint all of these in. You'll see just how quickly those little bits of cleanup start really making them come together. I'm going to go ahead and start painting leather. So his straps, his equipment, and his gloves. For this, I'm using Vallejo's Flat Brown. Now this is very similar to Mournfang Brown, probably a little bit darker. Uh, so if you want to stick to Citadel, Mournfang is going to be your best shot, or maybe something like Thondia Brown even, once we've shaded it. But again, coverage is everything here. So let's get his gloves. Now there isn't really a huge amount left to do. I'm going to go straight to black from this point on, and what I'm going to do is fill in some of the last tech bits. So his face mask here, let's get under here with a little bit of black. You'll see that I've used the uh, brown already to fill in the neck joint. Uh, so we'll fill that in in a minute. Uh, when it comes to really high-end sci-fi stuff like this, I tend to prefer avoiding metallic colors. They look a little, not primitive, uh, but I tend to think if you have your stuff looking a little more uh, plastic and high-end, it looks a bit more advanced. So I'm going to black in some of the gear. Yeah, I think that'll look cool. Come back in a minute and have a look at what I've done. Now, despite that, I still think a little bit of metallic will look quite cool on this. So I have here some Iron Hand Steel, which is quite a bright base color. I rather like it. Um, I'm going to pick just a couple of tiny areas to make those shine a little. So I'm going to fill in this with a smaller brush, just that little knobble there. And on the backpack here, this thing, this will work quite well as a vent too. Now I haven't used much of that, just anywhere that looks like aerials, so he's got quite a high-tech hat. <laughs> what I'm going to do now is some Retributor armor, and really just a couple of tiny areas for this. Once we've shaded these, these are going to look like a quite a bright brass. So here I'm going to put this little ammo thing in brass, and I'll also do 
Ooh, am I going to be careful enough to do this? Yeah, we'll do this. In this as well. No one says colors have had a little bit of time to settle. It's time that we finally apply our Agrax Earthshade. Now this time we aren't going to apply it over the whole miniature. We're going to exercise a little bit of restraint instead and apply it just over those areas that we have now finished. So you'll see straight away, ah yes, all of that detail will come to life. So I'm going to apply this over all of the sort of extra colors that we've just done. And then again, leave that for about 20 to 30 minutes to dry. Although, given how little we're doing of it, this will probably dry quite quickly. Now while that dries, something has been missing for a while now, and it's bothering me until I finally clicked on what it was I wanted to add here. So I have a little Corax White. Now this color is an absolute bear. You do want to put an agitator, like a stainless steel ball or something similar, into the pot. And you are going to want a little bit of Lamian Medium in there just to keep it thin. But the trade-off for that little bit of extra work is a white that does this. Magic. So I'm going to add just a little bit of white. And uh, yeah, we'll come back in a second. I'm going to finish that off. I'm not quite decided yet where I want to put this. Now just a little splash of white, I think, does break up the, uh, the outlines just enough. I think that looks pretty cool. Uh, you could highlight this with a little bit of white scar now if you wanted to. I'm not going to bother, but the option is there if that's what you fancy. I have now a little Gorthor brown, and what we're going to do is highlight some of the leather. So his pouches here on his waist are a good place to start with this, just to test how that's going to come off your brush. And then fingers and such. Now we could highlight his trousers, that beige stuff. Uh, if you did want to go down that route, then something like Baneblade Brown would be the easiest color to use for that. Frankly, I'm not going to, because highlighting all of those checks in his trousers, no. I might as well paint Harlequins, and I'm not that kind of mad. I don't, <laughs> I don't want to do that. So instead I have some Dawnstone, and I've watered this down just a little bit more than I normally would. And you'll see I've only got a wee bit on my brush. What we'll do is start applying this to, well, first of all, whatever I'm holding them with. But then we'll start just getting the black edges very lightly, there we go, with the edge of my brush. Now anywhere that you make a mistake with that, you can come back with a little bit of black and it will not matter. I've also gotten under there and tidied up his face a little with some of that. Um, it's up to you whether or not you bother. Honestly, once he's on the table and you look at him like this, as you can see, you're never going to notice that. But from here, what I'm going to do, I'm going to stop. Um, you could highlight the, the brassy stuff with a little bit of Liberator Gold and use a nice bright silver for the very little silver that we've done on him. But I don't think it's going to be necessary. So I'm going to go ahead and varnish him. I'm going to use Vallejo's Matte Varnish Spray. And we'll pop a base on him, get a look at what he looks like when he is all finished. And there at last, our Eternal Dynasties Warrior is complete. And you can see what I meant about not really bothering too much about how to paint his face, because once he's down there at table level, you're just not going to see it. But I figured including how to do the visor would probably be worthwhile in case you decide to use the alternate helmets that come in the kits. Now, if you do want to get hold of these, these are presently the Patreon rewards for January over at One Page Rules, but they do also sell old kits on My Mini Factory, which I will include links to both of those so you can cruise along and check those out. In your own time. Now as far as licensed printers, uh, most of the time I'm able to point you in the right direction. This time though you probably need to ask uh, One Page Rules Gaetano over there personally. Um, I don't know of any but it doesn't mean they're not out there. It's just something you need to chase up if you don't have your own printer. So this turned out to be a lot of fun. Um, ordinarily, you know, everybody makes fun of me. I paint red all the time, but there's normally a little variation here and there in how you can do it. And this time I think the uh, the shapes, you know, the texture that is in this model, it really suits my usual wash in a dry brush. So I'm quite pleased with that result. So as always, thank you very much to Exit 23 Games for the light and sound equipment as well as all of the patrons who are keeping me ticking in paints and glue, including my producers, Alan Nuttall, Kyrie Crawford, Trainboy, Fred, and Jimmy. Your support lets me do this mad nonsense. Any questions or anything, feel free to drop them in the old comment box below. My Twitter and Facebook are both linked there too. So thank you very much for your time, one and all. 
and you will enjoy the rest of your day.